Galloway's Support Through Sight Loss. Galloway's Get Active presents Tai Chi with Phi Aisia. Joining us today on the, the Get Active uh, Zoom meeting, we've got Phi Aisia. I hope I'm saying it that right, pronouncing it yeah. right. Um, and she's here to tell us a little bit about Tai Chi and I think we said, was it Health Kwai Gong as well? Health Qi Gong, yes. Yeah. So over to you, Fiasia. Okay, that's wonderful. Well, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to come and talk about Tai Chi and Qi Gong because uh, I understand with this uh, uh, COVID-19 that our mobility, our movement, everything has been quite uh, restricted. And since uh, March, I've been doing Tai Chi and Qi Gong classes online on Zoom every day for 100 days. And that had really changed my mind because previously I thought, no, you can't possibly follow an exercise class on watching a TV, watching a screen, but I've been proving wrong and I've really enjoyed doing it uh, myself. And today, uh, what I'm going to talk about is give you a quick rundown of uh, what Tai Chi and Qi Gong are. And then we also want to ask you for your advice if you were thinking about uh, taking part on a more regular basis, how you would like me to change and adapt my teaching so that it is easier for you to follow. Okay, so now what is Tai Chi? And perhaps you all know that Chinese martial arts and everybody have been hearing a lot about uh, martial art in China. And we, I think sometimes there's a stereotype of uh, all Chinese uh, children or Chinese people are martial artists, a bit like Bruce Lee, which is not true. But then we do have a very long tradition of uh, doing uh, Tai Chi and Qi Gong. And now Tai Chi is a type of martial art. If you see on the screen, there is the black people move, moving and their postures sort of uh, would perhaps remind you of uh, fighting. And Tai Chi being a form of uh, martial art, it has the fighting elements in it. So there are actually martial art uh, applic application of the moves. However, mm, most people now in China, when they do uh, Tai Chi, they are not thinking about martial art fighting. Rather, we use it as a form of uh, exercise. If you ever watched any BBC's uh, report about China, and if the camera comes to a park, and you see lots of uh, people, particularly older people, uh, doing exercise, waving their arms about in a very slow, graceful movement, and people may get the wrong impression and thought, well, Tai Chi and Qi Gong are only for the older people. It doesn't have to be, but because of it, it's very slow, young people tend to think it's boring. They don't want to do it. But there are increasingly more and more young people appreciate the benefit of a low intensity exercise. Because this type of exercise is uh, you are less prone to injuries. And there are many different types of uh, Tai Chi. So there's a young style, which is most popular in the world. And, and there's also the Chen style. Chen style, they believe that they are the, the, they are the, the grandfather of uh, all Tai Chi in the world. And there's this, this little village in Northern China. They have a very long tradition of uh, practicing it. But some people, researchers are thinking about, no, 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 they, uh, Tai Chi doesn't originate in any one place. It's been genetically sort of growth and evolved and developed in different parts of China. At some point, people put them together, refine it and improve it and make it better. Uh, the, for our purpose as a, a keep fit exercise, we want to emphasize is very low intensity. And that's why you, you tend to find older people in a park doing it because it's less demanding. And you can make it much harder if you want, but you can also take it easily and build it up gradually. Uh, it, 
some people also call it meditation emotion because most of the time when we think about meditation you think of uh, sitting there or lying there uh, but actually with tai chi the very slow movement helps you to focus in your mind because the emphasis is on using your mind to guide the movements and also you need to be channeling the energy flow according to the, the movements. So it makes it very mindful. So I think it's a great uh, uh, way of uh, mindfulness practice as well. Uh, saying that, particularly in the Chen style, Tai Chi movement can also be very, very fast. Uh, and uh, when you are doing, like using it for fighting, it can be very sharp, very fast, rapid movements, and very forceful as well. Uh, I think Tai Chi and Qigong are particularly good for, well, in the lockdown uh, period, is because it does not require any special equipment. So if you go to the go to the gym or for weight training and etc., you need special equipment to do that. Or uh, unlike running uh, or any ball games, you need quite a lot of space. And with Tai Chi. Typically, we say uh, you only need the amount of space where a cow lies down. Because in, in China, it originated from the rural rural uh, areas where they go farming, they have a cow, they say the enough space for a cow to lie down, that is enough for you to practice uh, Tai Chi. So that would be very good for us doing it at home. And seeing about the health benefit, there are many different health benefits on it, and it can be suitable for curing many disease. Uh, for the NHS, if you Google their website, it's particularly used for fall prevention. The reason being, it's encouraging you to be very mindful, very aware, conscious of how you shift the weight from one leg to the other. So this constant slow shifting the weight helps you to strengthen your, your muscles, builds up your mobility and your, uh, how do you call it, your stability as well. Okay. And also, if you are interested to, to follow more, to read up more, if you Google the Harvard Medical School, it's got a whole series of publication about how to do qigong well and what are the benefits of qigong okay and uh, of uh, tai chi now let's move on to talk about health qigong qigong literally simply means energy work qi qi is it can be air can be your breathing uh it could also mean the energy so it's very similar to uh, in the yoga discipline, we talk about pranayama, maybe some of you already do that. It's sort of uh, in a meditative state, you, your attention is focusing on breathing, you adjust the breathing, the speed and the, the shallowness or the, the depth of that in order to guide prana or it's the Indian word for qi, for energy to flow to different parts of the body. And uh, uh, it, it is an art of health preservation in ancient China. It's got a very long tradition and typically is the Taoist. So Taoist, some people see it uh, as a type of religion or it's a way of living, a philosophy. And for people practicing Taoist, and they want to be able to connect to the sort of a higher level with the, the higher level energy there and to prolong their lives. They, are, they have many different ways of doing it, but one of the ways is through practicing Qigong. And uh, later on, we'll talk about a particular set that originated in the Shaolin Temple. You all know about the Shaolin Temple. Then we'll talk about why it started there. Okay, so the purpose through practicing Qigong is to channel the energy flow along the meridians. So there are 12 major meridians that comes along the body. And if you are able to 
guide the energy to flow better than it's uh, it prolongs the life. One of the things we the Chinese believe is if you have aches and pains anywhere, that is because there is a blockage. The blood is not flowing well because we need the blood to carry the oxygen to nourish whichever part of the body it is. Okay, so blood or qi, they just use different terms to to explain the uh, human body and to get rid of any pain, you just need to unblock any blockage there. So the energy, the blood can flow better and then you, you won't get any pain. Uh, talking about qigong on its own, there are many different forms. Usually people would be practicing the qigong sitting down or you could do what we call a uh, pole stand. So you sit, you stand there like a tree. So you're deeply, so your, your feet are firmly grounded. So you hold that position. So all these are static uh, posts, but some are in motion. So a bit like uh, uh, Tai Chi is talking about uh, meditation in motion. And uh, Tai Chi is seen as a form of Qigong. But Qigong, well, if you know anything about, uh, in China, you know sort of religion has uh, come in and out of favor of uh, the government. And so they want to, on the one hand, they want to encourage people to do exercise uh, for health preservation, but at the same time, they don't want you to be thinking too much about the spiritual world. They want to very much ground it in this world. So they combine the physical movement with the Qigong tradition so that what we now tend to practice is uh, the focus is that there's a lot more physical movement there. And it doesn't stop you becoming religion, uh, religious or spiritual. You can still do that type of practice. But at the same time, the emphasis is a lot more about the physical mobilities and building up the strength. Okay. And there are three synchronizations. You perhaps won't be able to see what I've stuck on the wall. We're talking about uh, Tiao Shen, Tiao Xi, and uh, Tiao Xin. So this three synchronization is the physical movement, breathing, and the mind. So how does it work? It will slow down the breathing and, and then we'll, make, we'll do some uh, physical movements, but we don't just randomly move the body about. You very, very much focus on what you are doing with each movement. So one uh, feature about health Qigong is it's very slow. And actually we say, it's almost like the slower, the better. Uh, the, that is because it allows the mind to be focusing, to be experiencing the small changes in the body. Uh, it's very slow and it flows. So one movement flows to the other. So there is no sudden sharp movements, not in health Qigong. Okay. And also there's a lot of stretches. It can be quite uh, gentle. You can make it stronger once you become more flexible. So we don't uh, advise people to really, for example, try to touch the toes when you bend forward immediately. What we want to encourage you is slowly, slowly build up that uh, flexibility. Uh, and because all tendons and everything, particularly when you first get up in the morning, can be quite tight. So you need to warm up the body in order to stretch, to loosen the, the tendons, and it helps you to stretch better. And the benefit of uh, health Qigong, it, it improves your mobility, your balance, it builds strength, and it tones the muscles. Uh, and then it, increase, it also increases your lung capacity. You all know the COVID-19 started in China, end of uh, December, beginning of January, and January, February time, it went really, really bad in China. And a lot of the minor cases, they were all taken into hospital, being isolated. And they, in order to encourage people to recover from minor cases, 
or medium uh, cases is they they encourage the ba duan jing is a form of health qigong and that the focus is on slow deep breathing and you breathe into the lower part of your uh, lung so that in a way it it expands the lung increases the capacity and that that's been proved to help uh, patients from suffering minor cases of uh, COVID-19, okay? And all these movements and slow breathing focused, it helps to calm the mind. So it helps with sleeping and it eases anxiety, etc. Let's talk a little bit more about what are the common routines of the health Qigong. So there are nine deep, uh, very, very widely practiced uh, routines and there are regularly competitions being held across the world and more so in China. And where do they come from? They weren't designed out of uh, thin air or group of professors sitting there and dream of it. It wasn't like that. What they've done is different sports universities in China, they were given the task and then using their own speciality, finding out what is the most popular practice uh, Qigong in their local area. You all know how big China is. So different parts in the north, south, central, etc. They have different uh, routines. And then all these routines are well established. They then improve on it to make it better, to make it more suitable for, for people who have to fit in this type of exercise to a busy day-to-day -day, uh, living with work and etc. Uh, also, they refine certain movements so to make the stretches more clear and uh, they will be focusing a lot more theory backing up or oh, it is the hand meridian or it's the heart meridian or it's the bladder meridian whichever part that they were uh, working on and then I just want to very quickly summarize the most common uh, four sets of a routine Ba Duan Jing is the most popular one. Now, I have a lesson every Friday morning, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. If you wish to join, that, that would, be, would be possible. And it's very popular across the world. It's the most popular one. It's easiest to learn. There are eight movements, and each movement is repeated six times. And if you do come to the class, I, I go very, very slowly because the set of movement is very slow anyway. And then we talk a lot about how do you move your hands and how do you how do you stretch? And if you're bending forward, how do you bend forward, etc. Uh, so it's even though it's the easiest to learn, it's less complicated, but it's no less uh, effective if it's done properly. And Yi Jing Jing is the set that I mentioned. It's uh, started by the Shaolin monks. You know, the Buddhist monks that they have to sit down, they have to chant, they have to meditate. They sit cross-legged for hours. And that causes drowsiness. They fall asleep, which is not very good. And also by keeping uh, static in a fixed posture for a long time doesn't help the the blood, the energy to flow, so that you, you need to then get up and exercise. And, but you don't do random ones. So they designed this set of, uh, they call it the classics for strengthening muscles and tendons. Uh, and this set is very much focusing on the spinal flexibility. And then we have uh, another set called the five animal play. This is designed by a very famous uh, doctor of uh, Chinese medicine over 2000 years ago. What he has done is he observed five animals, uh, observed many animals and he picked five and then he designed the movements based on the features of those animals. For example, the first set is the tiger because the tiger is very fearsome and is very strong. Uh, the, the movement are very typical, it pounces, so that there are some movements that are, are copying to that. And then there is the movement of uh, deer, because the deer with uh, the antlers on their head, sometimes they can turn around and almost turn the whole head around to look at their tails. Uh, so that 
again, so uh, really uh, helps your spine to, to move. And then there is the bird movement because the birds are very light, it flies. So there is the very flowy movements that helps you to do. Uh, and it, it increases your flex uh, balance as well because the movement requires you to stand on one leg. Okay. Uh, and then there is the monkey movement because monkeys are very naughty, very lively. Their head, their eyes, they move very quickly. So in this set, we have to imitate the movements of the monkeys. And then there is uh, the last animal is the bear. Bear looks very clumsy and they're big, they wobble uh, about, but actually they're very strong. And we, we focus on the, the walk looks like a very clumsy walk of the, the bear. Actually, that helps us to shift our balance from front to back, etc. Uh, one other set is called the six healing sounds. And this set is there's less physical movement, but a lot more focusing on breathing. And when you do the uh, each sound, you make a sound, and each sound is specifically linked to a different organ. And then we, we support it with a little bit of uh, movement of the body. It then helps to regulate that particular organ and makes it more active, and then wakes it up or calms it down, etc. It depends on what we are, what we are doing. Uh, if you do uh, learn this set, any set, I, I, I then will be able to go into more detail, just focusing on that one particular move. Okay, so this, uh, uh, I would like to invite you, I mean, the, the first reason for sort of coming to, to this is, I thought some of you might be interested to join the lessons. I've got funding from a community center in Brighton, and I'm able to run a six month course every Wednesday afternoon, half past five to six o'clock, only half an hour. And we learned one set of uh, health qigong, and we tend to focusing on one movement every week. So we start with some warm up and stretch, and then we learn that movement, and then we put everything together and we practice it again. I have uh, put the posters in the chat, so you'll be able to download that. Or if you want to find out more, you can email me. Okay, so what I'll do now is uh, I will stop sharing the screen. And if you have uh, any questions, please ask. And then uh, if you want, if you can find a bit of space and then you can follow me and do some movements. So before we start, please, if you've got any questions, ask the questions. Okay, yeah, if anybody's got any questions, you, you might have to unmute yourselves if that's okay. So if, any, if anybody's got any questions, just unmute yourselves and then you can ask them. I think there is a lady on Galaxy tab. Uh, do you have any questions? I see you have uh, you have unmuted yourself, or or Brian, do you have, or Charles, and Dennis. Was um was Tai Chi the oldest form of martial arts? Uh, I think it's a tricky question. It's certainly very very old, but I I wouldn't know whether it's the oldest because I otherwise I risk being. So of uh, China centric, China being such a uh, ancient civilization, some people will say, well, it started from China and then they expand to Japan or uh, South Korea. And um, I, I don't know whether it is the earliest form of martial art, but it's certainly a very, very old. Yeah. And the, the uh, five animal plays well. I mean, I think uh, what we do is sort of a people when they go into research to look at how Chinese martial art developed, they say it's because uh, in 
in living with nature, you observe the animals, you copy certain movements, and then for your own benefit, in order to be able to fight the wild animals and survive. Yes. Any other questions? No, it's me, Brian. I, I was watching a program a few months ago, and this yeah. doctor got this lady who was taking uh, tramadols every day, about up to eight tramadols a day. She had serious Ooh. back problems. Yes. And and um, it got her to join this Tai Chi. Yes. Uh, with this teacher. And within, I think it was about three, four months, mm -hmm. she was off the tablets and the pains had gone in her back. Yes, yes. Uh, Good. Amazing. Yeah, it is. I think uh, a lot of the time our... Our problem, a lot of the disease is to do with the spine. If your spine is misaligned, it causes physical problems. And with, uh, with Qigong or uh, Tai Chi, it's the same because some of the movement, it, it requires you to be so mindful. And then you're gently shifting the weight from one leg to the other. It then builds up the, strengthens the muscle. So, so everything is, is better aligned. That helps. And I think uh, also we say uh, whenever pain you have is because of the blockage. If through breathing exercise, through physical movement, you are able to unblock those, those uh, blockage, then it cures the pain. Yeah, I'm sure what you said is right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. You said there was, um, you were doing a a six week course, a six month course at the moment. Is yes. there a charge for that? Is there a cost? No, it's free. It's, it's free. free. I have sent two posters onto the onto the chat. And one of them uh, is about the Wednesdays class. So Wednesdays half five to six. The funding is from Brighton. And at the moment, regularly, I'm getting about 27, 28 people coming because it's on Zoom. So it does not really matter how many people comes. So if you want to give it a go and you don't want to pay for anything, then I would suggest that would be a good starting point for you to have a taste of what it's like. Okay. You're not, you're not doing any other ones at any other time? I do have uh, other times like Thursday morning, eight to nine, Friday morning, eight to nine, Tuesdays, uh, five to six in the afternoon, etc. cetera. Uh, but those- oh, what, what's, what's the, what's the two? There is a charge. What's the Tuesday one that's five till? The, uh, the Tuesday is five to six is Tai Chi, is introduc introductory Tai Chi session. So for very, we, we do the most simple form. Like I mentioned before, Tai Chi, there are many, uh, what do you call it? Uh, many different schools. There are some very fast ones, some very slow ones. Some have 108 movements and it will be really difficult to try to particularly learn it online. So we do the most simple one. We call it the Beijing eight movements. So there are only eight movements and for each movement, we do it once on the left, once on the right. And that, so very short. If you practice the full set, it's about two and a half minutes from beginning to end. However, uh, the beauty of Tai Chi is the same thing. You can do it multiple times. Just let it flow. So that's the uh, third. Uh, are, you, are you thinking about the later afternoon sessions? I can't. I can't do Wednesday because that's the one day I go out. So I was I was looking for okay. an afternoon because I'm not a morning person. So okay. eight o'clock in the morning, you've no job. Okay. So <laughs> Tuesdays, uh, five to oh, six. Uh, uh, yes. uh, can you see my email on the on the chat? No, I'll have to. I'll have to get. Um, I forgot what the name of the. Uh, so, shall, I, shall I tell you now? You can write it down. Um, no, I can't them on the phone, so it won't let me do two things at once. Oh, okay, okay. What we what we can do is we can put the we can put the email in all the different uh, Facebook groups if that's a big help. Would that help? Yeah, Are yeah. You, sorry, you, I forgot what your what your name is. Sorry, it's, yeah, it's James. Sorry, James. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't catch what. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, what... def, def, yeah, yeah. Please, if you can put it, I'll I'll send it out an email or something. 
Yeah, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do that. And I think the poster has the um, email address and things like that on it anyway. So if yeah. we put the poster in all the, all the Facebook groups uh, and what have you, and we can do that, um, and then you can, you can access it off there. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then, and, and then I will be able to, to uh, answer any more questions and then tell you when we are starting. And uh, it works out about four pounds per session. It's a one hour session. Good. Uh, so um, any, it's John again. If not, um, do you want to yeah. have, a, have a go with me? Give it a try. Hello? Um, can I ask, it's Yvonne. Yeah. Can I ask, I was asking um, a fitness trainer, voluntary one about Tai Chi, because I'd heard yeah. about the good, excellent benefits. Um, she said, can you stand on one leg? Well, sometimes I do better than others. Okay. <laughs> probably mostly not. Are you allowed to sort of not lean and not hold, but kind of rest on something for safety? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah yes, yes. I think uh, that this, this is why I wanted to uh, talk to this group and say uh, how you want me to modify the, the sessions. Uh, actually, there is uh, certain, uh, certain routines you can do it sitting down. You, you know, some, some, some uh, uh, old, old people just, they, they can't, they can't well, they sit on a wheelchair, but they just move the upper body and they still be able to turn. Yes. And stretch mm -hmm. with the upper body. So I, if uh, when I say uh, you need to stand on one leg, when your when your doctor was saying that can you stand on one leg, we are not talking about you stand on one leg holding. A bit like uh, you know in yoga, we we do a tree pose and we, we stand on one leg, etc. Not like that. We are not standing on one leg for a long time. What we do is we shift the weight. We move or bring one leg up, take a step, and then we move the way to the other leg, and etc. Et so a bit like walking. Oh, that's fine. If you walk, you are only. Oh, that's reassuring. <laughs> Good. Um, can you tell us what exercises um, benefit which parts of the body specifically, or not? Is that too? Uh, it, it depends on which part of the, uh, which moves you are doing. For example, uh, do you want to, do you want to get up and do a little bit with me? Well, it's a bit tricky because I'm on a landline, so I've got a whole phone. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't okay. hear it from a distance, sorry, and I can't see anyway, so. <laughs> we, we could it do might be an idea that if, if people are able to, and if they want to, if they can join in, if not, we can just watch the demonstration see how it goes but yeah. i think um i think john might have had a question as well did john have a question yeah i was going to ask um does this have uh, tai chi is it related to any form of re reflexology or reiki or anything like that uh well yes and no because reiki is a type of uh, qigong exercise oh but reiki is focusing uh, a lot of the time they were you use Reiki to heal other people. You can use it for yourself, but a lot of the time it's, it's like a medical Qigong <laughs> to heal other people. Uh, you, you need to, yes, you could do that. But I think with, uh, with Tai Chi and Qigong very much is you use the slow movements synchronized with your breathing, and then you increase the mobility, the flexibility of your joints, but at the same time, you build up the strength. And that there are different, how do I say? I think once you get to, to do it more, you'll be able to tell that which part of the body, for example, let, let's just say, uh, can you see me now raising my hand? Mm. What doing is you know the palms when you when you make a fist your middle finger wherever your middle finger touches is what we call the lao kong which is a lao kong acupuncture point so I'm some students i zoom meet the information but you are using enhanced encryption i'm sorry i, I didn't like quite hear so I think that's somebody's got speech on the phone that's just talking talking back. Okay. Uh, 
we have got a question. I think Toshi wants to ask a question as well. Okay, you'll ask the question first before I demonstrate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I'm Toshi. Yeah. I've been doing Tai Chi classes with a teacher. Um, I joined because of diabetes and osteoporosis. And yes. it's very health focused. And I know what you've been saying. Yeah. But what I find in actual class mm -hmm. is because I'm visually impaired, yeah. there is a difference on how you should teach people. Do yes. you make any special provisions for that? Because we can't say, I can copy your te the teacher. Uh -huh. you, know, yeah. you can't see the fine movements or which direction. And also, when the movement is fast, uh -huh. I cannot keep up with all the details. Yes. Right? Yeah. So That's if fine. you're teaching an entire class, which is a mix, visually impaired and ordinary people on Zoom, we will not be able to uh, cope. No. So that's why I'm asking uh, uh, or proposing two things. One is on a Wednesday, come and join in the, the free class because there is no commitment. You just come and have a look and see whether you are able to, to follow the class. Because what we do on the Wednesday's class is uh, uh, health qigong is, is different from tai chi. It doesn't, I mean, tai chi flows from beginning to end. It, it doesn't have a stop and start point. That makes it so much harder. While qigong, with the health qigong, there are distinct moves. The first move, the second move, the third move, etc. So in each session, we just talk about that one move. And then I do go into a lot of detail talking about uh, sort of like different parts of the body and what you are actually moving. So I would suggest if you can make it on a Wednesday, come and have a go and see how you like it. If you think no, it's it's beyond uh, it's, it's not it's not suitable for visually impaired groups. Then it's up to your group to decide whether you want to find a time, for example, on a Wednesday afternoon, etc. And I will do it just for your group so that we slow everything right down. And then because it's a very very small group, and I can come up right to the screen to demonstrate what we are doing. And then maybe explaining all the movements in a lot more detail, break it down more. Yeah, one of, one of the things that would be a big help is when you, you're doing the movements, if you could yeah. kind of describe what you would, how you were doing, which way you were moving. Yes, yes. yes. Example, I, I, do, I do do that, yeah. yeah I sometimes find like I'm doing too much, yes, I do. Mm. So it would, it would mean, mean using perhaps a little bit more um words description on it if you will so yeah. if your palms were facing towards you yeah, or yeah. away from you and yes. just different things like that would help i think yeah 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 i do i do talk about even even now we're talking about just uh, exercising the neck sort of uh, loosen up the neck we i i do that as well do you want to have a go yes well, okay do a yeah. demonstration and i'm sure some people join in exercise the neck yeah <laughs> so what, what we'll do is uh, just to for you to uh, get a feel of uh, how much detail I go into the movements, we'll just use uh, our, our warm up, the morning warm up as an example. So we, we begin by warming up, getting the neck ready. Okay, so uh, we start by your, your face, you're just looking at the screen. Okay, take a deep breath in and then slowly turn to your right. So I'm your mirror. You turn to the right and then hold your stretch there. Feel the Thank stretch you. at the back of your neck. Thank and you. Hold and then slowly breathe out as you turn your head to face the front. Again, take a deep breath in and slowly turn to your right. Keeping the body straight, you're just turning the head. Feel the stretch at the back of your neck. Hold. Slowly breathe out and turn your head to face the front. 
So, so this is what we do. And then the next movement, now we've turned the next both ways. The other thing I want you to do is to imagine you are a crane. You know, crane's a very graceful bird, very often standing on one leg. Okay, it's got a very long neck. So it stretches his neck to go and catch some fish and then bringing it back. So what we are going to do is we are going to use our chin imitate this bit like the crane okay so first of all your eyes looking forward tuck your chin in slightly so you push your crown up from here push your chin up and then push your chin forward downward and then inward and bring your chin up along your cervical spine. Relax. Let's repeat. Look up, push your chin upwards, forward, downwards, and then pull your chin up along the cervical spine. Now let's do it the opposite way. Take your chin in, bring it inwards, push your chin downwards, and then forward, upward. Now straighten the head, looking forward. One more time, keep your chin in, push it downwards, forward, upward, and then eyes looking forward. So this is Straighten your neck forwards and backwards. Let's do one. Now we need to uh, stretch our neck sideways. So slowly take a deep breath in and float your left hand up above your head. Get your left finger touching the tip of your right ear. Slowly pull your head. So bring your left ear closer to the left shoulder. At the same time, your right fingers stretch down. So your, left, your right fingers try to reach the floor and that increases the gentle stretch on your neck a little bit more. Slowly breathe out and easy stretch. And float your hand back. Relax the shoulders. Again, breathe in and float your right hand over. Your right hand up. Right finger pulling on the tip of your left ear and gently bring your right ear close to your right shoulder. At the same time, left hands stretch down. Imagine you try to reach the floor with your left fingers, slowly ease on and come back. Okay. Now from here, if you have a little bit of space, then very gently, naturally upright. By naturally upright, we mean don't lock your knees. Okay, so you're standing straight, but not bolting upright like a soldier. Soft knees, when you're ready, sink your weight into your right leg. Okay, slowly lift your left foot off. You peel your left heel up, form of foot, and then toes. Then take the left step, hold the weight. Put your left foot down. When you put a foot down, put the toes down. Heel down and then shift the weight in between two legs. From here, take a deep breath in and slowly raise both your hands up to the front. In front of you, up to about chest height, then bring the palms towards your chest. Breathe out and press down. As you are pressing down, slowly, slowly breathing out. Press.
pressing down slowly. Feel the energy flow on your hands. One more time. Now visualize yourself standing in the swimming pool with water coming up from our chest line. Nice, look warm water. Okay, so breathe in and slowly reach both palms. Okay, raise both palms up to shoulder height. Bring the palms towards you. Breathe out and slowly press down. Slowly guiding the energy down. From here, take a deep breath in. Now, this time when we lift our palms, we are lifting the palms up from the side of our body. You open wide, breathe in and lift. Feel the weight of the energy on your palms. Slowly, slowly gathering the energy into a big hole and raise it above your head. You open your crown and slowly breathe out as you bring both palms down. So palms facing down, coming down, feeling the energy into your head, your neck, your chest, your abdomen, thighs, and your lower legs. All the way down. One more time. Take a deep breath in and raise both hands up. Gathering the energy in your environment. Take energy all above your head. Slowly, slowly breathe out as Arms up, feeling the energy into your head, your neck, your chest, your thighs, and your lower legs. You should be feeling the energy traveling down all the way to your feet. From here, shift the weight back to your right leg. Slowly bring your left foot in, standing on both legs. Okay, so this is usually what I do is I do a few minutes of meditation. This is what we call the moving meditation at the beginning of the session. Uh, do you think you are able to follow that? Yes, yeah, we got that. Okay, yeah, yeah. very good. Thank okay. you. Good, Very yeah. Relaxing, I'm guessing. Yes. <laughs> you, can, yeah. you can feel it working down here and that, can't you? Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. That's very good. Yeah. You can feel the energy moving for your body slowly. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. That's it excellent. Moving all the way down to your feet. Oh, okay. So in a way, I think sometimes we say when God opens, uh, closes one door, but he tends to open the window. So it takes something away from you, but it gives you something else back. So I don't know whether because visually you are weaker, but then you are able to to have stronger sensations elsewhere. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 energy yeah. flow. I can feel it passing all through me as you were saying. Well, that's wonderful. That's really, but really good. good as well. Yeah, I can yeah, see, but she can feel it as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, I, I would say, because it doesn't cost you anything, turn up on Wednesday's les lesson, yeah. have a feel, yeah. uh, the, the opening, the beginning, the sort of the warm-up stage is the same, and then we'll, we'll learn a new movement, but the movement, even though we've started the lesson already, but it doesn't really matter. Like yeah. any exercise class, you can always join any time, and then it just we will be doing a lot of uh, repetition. If you feel this is for you and you want to do more and you want it to be specifically tailored for your group, then you discuss with James and then and then we can come up with a plan and see how we can do it. 
Or you can just join my uh, Tuesday, Thursday or Friday's uh, lesson, which is longer. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I'll try the Wednesday. You try the Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, good. You just uh, need to make sure that when you are getting up, you don't, you can't trip over anything in front of you. So oh, yeah. Empty space. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if, if, if you guys want to, to have a go at the, the Tai Chi or the uh, Chi 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 Gong, Gong. Gong. Yeah. if you want to have a go at that, then um, get in touch with me, drop me an email or something. Um, if we get enough people interested, I'm sure we can come up with something on a, a date that suit, a date and time that's suitable for the, the majority of you and we can put something together. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good. Hope you find it uh, useful. Yes, yeah, we're good. Thank you very much. Have a very nice weekend. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you likewise. And I think okay. you know when continue with your meeting. Yeah. I think that's been very helpful for everyone, and thanks a lot for coming along. It's okay. Thank you very much. Galloway's support through side loss.